is Malorian, and this will be now the fourth game of the Brawler Bash tournament, and it's going to be my Orcs and Goblins up against some Vampire Counts. So going into the second day in the fourth game, I was actually in a way feeling very good because I was in a good position to rally. I was at this point out of the you know the thirty whatever tables, I was at around you know table fifteen, so a little bit above average. And meanwhile, the big thing I had going for me is the cards. So you got this set of cards for the tournament. You get to pick one to use every game, and it's going to give you an extra scenario where if you do so and so, you get an extra five hundred points plus an extra special rule. Now the two best ones were the ones where you automatically get first turn and another one where a cord unit gets the vanguard so I had both of those locked and ready to go and another one was also this lucky day or either you could use it to get some cheap you know easy to win scenario you automatically get a seven or you stop the special effects of the other person I had all three of these best cards still to go so with me being you know not the top tables and having all these strings ready to go, I was ready to pump out some freaking massive numbers. So this first game here is going to be against Vampire Counts. It's going to be the whole double Terror Geist. Uh, his Terror Geist actually broke off the base. Well, it's magnetized and wasn't going back on. Uh, so he actually has another Terror Geist behind that kind of like Greek looking building. But basically what he has from uh, left to right is he has some dogs, some more dogs, ghouls, crypt horrors, more dogs. Uh, a little unit there that's... It's, I think that's skeletons, and then there he has the Blender Lord, and he has three of the Banshees, heroes. Uh, in the back he has zombies, and he has a Necromancer, Master Necromancer. The two Terror Guys, he actually took a Coven Throne with the Vampire BSB on it, some more dogs, some more dogs, and uh, yeah, I think some more dogs. So yeah, he, he definitely controlled the placement of this, but even the way it was, I was fine with it, because... I am now, for this one, going to be going for first turn. I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to shoot the hell out of him. Uh, by the way, he also has three Vargeists on the far left. So he has to engage me. Only main thing I'm worried about is that freaking Blender Lord, but I'm pretty sure that my trolls can deal with him. Black Orcs are a perfect counter for the Crypt Horrors and everything else. I just need to get in there and start killing him. So I'm feeling very good about this game, uh, but the way it started was the fact that, haha, we both did get first turn. I used my Lucky Day to stop his, so I've already dropped two of my aces in this first game, so let's see if it's going to be worthwhile. And for any of you guys who have been watching enough of my reports, whenever I say something and then say, well, let's see how it works out, that's usually foreshadowing that it didn't work out. So in this turn here, there wasn't really any animosity issues. Uh, I was really just kind of moving up the regular line. Remember, I'm just being kind of defensive. I, I'm figuring he has to come to me. And then I charge my dogs into his dogs, and I you know kill and crumble them, so that's good. That's one off the board there. And then I start shooting. Misfire, misfire, scatter, scatter, and one of my rock lob has exploded. So for me, burning two of my cards, all I got was for one of my own rock lobas to explode. Very, very disappointing. Uh, I also, I think it was in this one, or one of the ones here too, where I tried throwing six dice at the foot of Gork, and I got like triple ones and triple twos, and like didn't even cast it, so... Yeah, I mean, just not a good way to start. Another thing that sucks is that I, the plan over here is he had a couple of dogs who were trying to sneak in. Now, I killed a few with a Doom Diver, so that's something. But the plan was to move back the one Spear Chucka that was within range and then turn the Chariot so I'd be ready to counter. Well, I totally forgot to do any of that. So just a complete mental blunder. Uh, I mean, I was probably just focusing on the, uh, the point here about all the cards I'd spent and all these things. And uh, yeah, just really, just a really stupid blunder. So now all these dogs are going to be chewing me up. But I mean, at least they're kind of weak, so maybe I can kill them off. A bigger deal was this over here. And this is, again, this is uh, uh, not... Well, it's not so much a tactical error as it is just a knowledge error. So what I had is I had my savages here to kind of deal with his Vargeist. And if I could have bet money, I would have bet, you know, copious amounts of money that his plan over here was to move over the dogs, force me to overrun, and then flank me with the Vargeist. Well, what happened here is that he passed his frenzy test and then flew to the flank. So he's actually going after my war machines. So... 
totally didn't expect this whatsoever. And I mean, a big part of that is I didn't think that they were allowed to march. So, but no, they're vampires, blah, blah, blah. So this is now, my whole plan is falling apart and this is not good news. So end of the turn, it looks like this. Uh, they kind of like big base on the far right. That's just like a, you know, a mausoleum, mausoleum type thing. That's actually the other terror guys. But, uh, you know, he, he's not being overly aggressive. You know, he can kind of hold back. He's having kind of a set line, but it's not like he wants to engage me. Uh, but, yeah, he goes and destroys a bolt thrower on the right side. Uh, you know, it's a whole thing where he just, just kills some of the crew and then I flee. So he has to stay there as he destroys the machine. But I, I really hope my shooting turns it up now. My turn, too, and what I do over here is I try charging in the savages because, I mean, if they can get in there and start killing some stuff, that would be uh, some fantastic news. But the big thing is I have to get up there first. Well, the problem is that I failed my frenzy test, and I had to declare a charge. So now I just kind of fail and kind of, like, shift on over. I'd love to be just, you know, getting over there and doing awesome. But, yeah, how about I just shift over three inches type thing, right? So, ugh, hate it. So my line is kind of doing a, a slow shift over. Uh, I'm not wanting to engage this whole super, well, it's kind of like a Death Star thing with a Blender Lord and the three ethereal units. And so I'm trying to hoping my black orcs can kind of swing around the left side. The savages, of course, now are going to be too slow. But I'm able to charge in with my chariot, destroy some wolves there. My shooting destroys one of the terror guys, so that's pretty nice that I'm actually getting some some use out of my shooting but otherwise you know do foot of gork it's uh scrolled and that's pretty much my turn his turn too you know i had the slight hope that maybe he'd be going for my savages or my bunker or something like that i mean it's kind of odd that you're actually hoping they're going for your bunker but no here he is coming into my war machines and what this is going to mean now is that even though i thought i was going to be in the perfect defensive position now he's going to be swinging through and destroying my war machines getting all these points and uh yeah not good news. So end of the turn, it looks like this. His dogs are there to kind of slow down my black orcs. And otherwise, he's kind of shifting around. Like, he's having a hard time with the terror guys being in a spot where he would not be charged by the trolls or something else. So he's really trying to wait to try to find the right time to get in there. But uh, otherwise, you can see the terror guys, or sorry, the var guys destroyed the, the one thing, overran into something else. And yeah, my poor war machines. My turn three, then I'm trying to push up a little bit more. Uh, I, of course, the Black Orcs destroyed their wolves. I used Hand of Gork to be moving over the savages so that they're actually in the fight. Uh, I move my BSB into the Big Night Goblins and turn around the other goblins, just in the hope that maybe they can be back there to redirect the Vargeis if needed. And then otherwise, that's pretty much it. All shooting I tried doing into the, the Vargeist for I mean, well, what I have. Sorry, not the Vargeist, the Terrorgeist. I actually plink off two wounds from a Doom Diver, so that's something. But at the same time, if I don't destroy it, he's just going to heal it up. His turn three then, you know, you can see his Vargeist in the ba back there have destroyed one Doom Diver and they're into the second one. And otherwise, he's just staying back. He's castling up. And, uh, you know, you can see also the dog on the right has finished clearing up my, my chukkas. So, I mean, that whole thing definitely yeah just giving up all these points to this silly little dog he was able to scream off if, if i didn't mention it before he just basically moves up and whatever i have in front of him he doesn't bother charging it he just screams at it so that's what killed my wolves that's what killed my chariot i mean why charge it when you can just scream at it right so uh yeah it's again it's it's almost like my last game where it's getting frustrating playing against a defensive opponent because i'm just not getting any points and it seems like for the most thing he's going for is he's going for the win not for the points so he knows he's up ahead with all the war machines why engage and so i need to get the hell in there as fast as possible my turn four, and this was kind of a, a weird thing that happened. Uh, my night goblins actually here failed animosity and were forced to charge into the flank of the, the Vargeist. And I thought, okay, well, let's see how badly I get beaten up, right? Well, what happens is, of course, he destroys the machine, only does one damage over here. But because of all the static res, and I, also I did a couple of wounds to him as well, he's actually crumbling down. So he's down to two Vargeists. I think one of them is down to one wound or something. And he was, wasn't able to reform. So all of a sudden, these night goblins seem to be saving the day. Otherwise, it looks like this. So 
this is really why I decided, you know what, I gotta freaking get some points. I don't care what happens, I gotta get some points. So the savages had to charge their wolves and whatever. Uh, I used Hand of Gork to be putting my black orcs right in front of them. And this is where I also got off, finally, a good foot of Gork. You know, it's been games and games now where it's been doing just marginal at best. And now, look at the damage it did here. It killed three of the Cryptors. It killed a ton of the Ghouls. They're almost, like, completely wiped out. And now... Now they have my black orcs right in their face so that's really good that this is swinging around and talking about where I, I'm trying to get some big points here this is where I say screw it let's charge that goddamn vampire lord so the trolls go in there and basically what I'm signing lining up is that I'm just gonna puke on him six times he has a four plus ward but if I can get some stuff through there it'll be all good so this time I put a couple of wounds on him he was down to just one so I was close but the main thing is if I can just kill him, that's a good chunk of points, and maybe I can get lucky with some crumbles as well. His turn four, now you can notice that my trolls are gone, and that's because he, he charges in with the whole uh, coven throne there, does a bunch of damage and all these things. Uh, I'm actually able to kill the vampire lord, but the crumble tests all around pretty much don't do anything of significance. And uh, then he, he runs down the trolls, gets tons of points, gets into my night goblins. And uh, otherwise, you can see there, he, he didn't charge in. You know, his guys are right inside of my black orcs, and he's basically now just trying to redirect me away with the ghouls uh, to try and save all the points. It won't be enough, because obviously you can see there that when I charge in, I line up, the overrun will take me into the crypt horrors. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So got some points here, but that, at the end of the game tier 2, I was thinking that, sure, I, I killed like whatever, 300 points, blah, 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 and I got points there. But when I was thinking of it, the special objective I had for my card gave me 500 extra points if I went and kept my biggest, ex most expensive unit that wasn't a character uh, above half wounds at the end of the game, and that gave me 500. Well, that was the trolls. So I basically just said, instead of earning 500 points, let's get 380 or whatever this vampire was. So maybe it would have been best just to do the whole stalemate with him, but... Either way, this is where we're at right now. All right, so my turn five. Uh, the black orcs go in, destroy all the crypts. Oh, sorry, the the ghouls. Now they're into the the crypt horrors. So hopefully, I can get all those points there. Uh, and the fight against the skeletons, getting a ton of points there too. And another thing that's going to be fantastic is that one of the special missions for this game. And by the way, I didn't really talk about much, but this is actually dawn attack. But what they have, what they do is instead of going all random, is you have to put at least two units in each quadrant. So it's not really that big of a deal, especially for me with all my drops. But the other thing is that if you have a unit with fortitude within six inches of the center of the board, you get an extra thousand points. If you both have fortitude within six inches, you both get 500. So right now, we both have banners, and we're both right there. If I can finish off these skeletons, I don't care if I finish off those little banshees, but if I can kill the banner there, that's an extra thousand points. So hopefully that's going to come through as well. Uh, my Night Goblins have a whole bunch to try and live up to, though, because here they come, and I have the Coven Throne in my flank, and I have the, uh, the Terror Bat there also as well. So, I mean, he's going to be doing tons of wounds. At the end of the day, I'll be fine, because I'm going to be steadfast no matter what. But the big thing is, of course, that he's going to be uh, doing a ton of wounds, obviously winning combat, and there's just that chance I could run. So then we get to the end of uh, his turn five here, and really all that happens is that in that comet there, I net myself, I roll like crap, leave him with two models, and then, yeah, don't take away the banner. Of course, everything else just kind of hides from me, and uh, that's where the game ends, because actually, even though this is turn five, we screwed up and somehow thought this was turn six. So, I mean, looking at this picture here, what probably would have happened is that I would have been able to finish off that unit, get the extra points. My black orcs would have gone to the flank of those uh, zombies and the necromancer, get all those points there as I obviously would just be crushing them and I should actually crumble them down, no problem. But <laughs> we, we somehow screwed up the turns and there you go. So, it was very close when he added up all the points, but uh, it did end up as a victory for the Orcs and Goblins, so hooray there. Uh, I can't remember, I think I got like 2,600 points or something, so again, kind of over half, uh, like, you know, like the, the mean of what you could be getting for points, but still, uh, I, 
I was just kicking myself for this game, and I mean, my opponent was great. You know, he was a nice guy, all that things. I mean, he did play again. Like, he was talking about how he has been winning every game so far, but he's not doing well because he's not getting many points, and that's because he's playing defensively. He's just going around, of course, screaming with the bats, killing off war machines, but he's not really going for the kill, and... Uh, I mean, again, this is in a tournament like this that kills you and your opponent whenever you go up against one of these defensive people where they're just not really just throwing it in and trying to get whatever points they can. And when you're just kind of focusing on just getting the regular style win. So that was very unfortunate. Of course, I also made my own tactical blunders, not even moving my guys to do my plan on the right side, screwing up with the Var Geist on the left. I mean, I could have been saved if he would have failed his leadership seven frenzy but it was not to be and then again as we looked at it here if we just would have done one more turn i would have gotten so many more points so it's just uh, i don't know it was uh good in a way that uh you know I, I got the win and blah 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 but at this point here i'm hoping that if i could have cranked this out i could get top orc and goblin player because there's just one guy in front of me but with something like this i, I doubt it but either way thanks for watching bye